Hello, good day, and welcome back. So today we're going to look at using IO Copy again. Uh, previously, we used IO Copy with our mem store, which was like a file-like um, object, data, user data define data type. And so, but we also had another data type we've been using, which is person. We had implemented IO Reader and IO Writer for it, and we were fairly happy because we were able to take a person, populate it, and have that be encoded in some bytes, which we can then, you know, use to shove over the wire, or shove into a file, or something like that. And then we can take bytes and then turn them back into a valid person object. And so we're feeling pretty good with ourselves. But now that we've been using IO Copy and we've used this now successfully with mem file, which if we again, if we mem store, if our mem store operates like a file, we can imagine that you can say copy one file to another, and that's a valid operation. The thing we want to look at today and see is can we use IO Copy with our person data type, even though we've implemented IO Reader and IO Writer for it? And then we'll see. I'm telling you this up front so you know what to look forward for, look forward to is that there's going to be a problem with this, how we've implemented it, and not that we couldn't fix it, but we're going to start talking through a little bit what we would require to fix it and ask ourselves, is that the appropriate thing to do for an object like person? And then the key takeaway is going to be no, in my opinion anyway, and I'll tell you why. And then the key takeaway is going to be that though not every user-defined type needs to implement something like IO Reader, IO Writer. Um, what might be more appropriate is in, in code or decode method, which we're going to see much later and we'll revisit our person at that time when we cover like the JSON um, package. But enough talking, let's jump in and take a look. So I told you what I was going to tell you, now I'm going to show you and then at the end I'll probably tell you again. So never hurt to repeat things multiple times. So here we are in our directory and I'm going to confirm that um, we don't have, uh, let's do it this way. Uh, come on. I'll confirm that I don't have anything stored there. Um, and our package already compiled. And so I'm going to copy like usual our section 11 directory. And I'm going to call it chapter 10, section 12. I'm going to CD into section 12. And then I'm going to start up the code editor. And then I'm going to go back and CD into 12. Come on, oh, I'm already in 12. CD into CLI, because that's where we run our code. And so CLI directory here, let's make some changes. So what we're doing is IO copy and person. So the problem with IO copy and person. Okay, and then here we're gonna change this to 12, because this is where we're working out of now. And so what I wanna do is bring in the person um, data type and its function that we wrote. If you remember, we did implement write for person in um, chapter in section four, and then we implemented read in section six. So I'm going to do that by doing cp minus r back up two places, and then for section four, I'm going to bring in the whole thing and put it uh, in the parent directory here, and then I'm going to do the same thing with section six. And so if I go over here, I should see four and six in my section 12 directory, because I was inside of CLI, so I said to put it in one directory up. And so now we're going to try and work with this. So let's see what we have here. So we have this definition of a person here and a constant for how long a, um, how many bytes in a social security number. So we're gonna cut that and we can create a new directory inside our project directory alongside CLI and um, MS. Actually, if we want, we could just rename one of these directories. So let's see if there's a rename here, and there is. And we can call this P, just P for person. Notice in package name for Go, you use nice short names. I don't need to really call this person um, because this is gonna be in my entire um, project anyway. So um, there shouldn't be any misunderstanding or confusion between my P and somebody else's P because this, this is a fully qualified name to that thing. So you go with nice short names, save yourself some typing, but that's the convention in Go is to use very short package names. So I'm gonna call it P. And so we already, I cut something out of, from here already. So I'm going to create another file 
and I'm gonna just call it person using the convention that we've been going with where we defined our type in um, so package P and then I'm gonna paste what I typed in I don't want the length um, well I'll, I'll revisit this idea soon um, but I don't want the link to be, if you remember, anything that's capital start with a capital letter in a package is public. And so we're going to have to fix up a few things. But let me go back here and start pilfering a few more things. And so I want this um, write function. So I'm going to cut that. And I noticed that I grabbed the um, string function also. So I'm going to package and I'm going to paste that in here and then I'm going to cut this out of here and I'm going to come on create my string that go function and then package and I'm going to put that here all right so this looks good and then with a right let's revisit our right um, so right function here um, there's some documentation here about how we're doing the encoding that I like to grab and put at the top of my write function here. And I'm gonna say um, the documentation, when you're doing documentation for Go um, thing types that are exported, you start off with the name of the thing you're exporting. So I'm exporting write, so I say write encodes a person object to bytes and using you know the foreign format, whatever. That's fine, that's good enough. And then um, I'm going to copy that because I'm probably going to steal that. Anyway, uh, let's go back to main here. And I don't think I want anything else from here. So I'm going to get rid of this. Delete. Goodbye. Thank you. And then for section six, I'm going to grab. We already have this stuff already. So um, I'm going to grab a few more things here. Okay. Um, it looks like we already have documentation for a read function. We already have strings, so we don't need that. I'm going to cut that, create a new file. I'm going to call read.go, and then I'm going to paste this here. And then, well, so it looked like, um, so again, read um, decodes a slice of byte into a valid person object using the format encoded by person that write. Now the reason I'm doing it this way and I, I, I don't want to specify it again is because I don't want to keep the formatted um, information in two places. If I change it in one place then I have to be sure to change the comment because I might change the code, but I might not update my comment and then it's going to be misleading. So by just referencing what a format looked like somewhere else, um, at least if I change it there, it's going to be correct for both in both places. If I still don't remember to change it over there, well, it's still wrong, but it's only wrong in one place if you, if you can get what I mean. Okay. Just trust me on that. <laughs> All right. So here's our um, read function. and. It's complaining about something, the package, uh, let's see, funked. Oh, there's no package, so we do package. And yes, this guy needs to be in a package. So that is looking good and import some stuff. And now the only thing left is if I go here, um, so um, if I go here, I can see it how um, there was some objects created and I try to write them to a buffer and all this other good stuff. And then once I add them in with a buffer, um, well, why don't we go go with that? So make a buffer, write some stuff into it, and then uh, let's just copy this for now. We'll go over and edit it. So this is all. I've gotten everything I need from here. So I'm going to delete this entire directory. Thank you. Goodbye. And so I go over to main here and let's just go stick everything we had from over there. So let's see. So we have person. And so this is complaining now that our unidentified person. So well, person is in this package P. So um, I have to fix this. So P that. And so now I should exp 
expect it to import p and it does and now okay looks like this is all nice and dandy and probably should work right so let's go run it and see so go run uh, main and fmt so it's saying that there's some things p and string that's undefined and all this other good stuff and so in the stringer method here it's complaining um huh so i sh probably shouldn't have a package p and then use p as the thing because we run into this problem before so i'm gonna call this the receiver and so i'm going to let me change this and uh, change this this guy and this guy so i'm gonna call this receiver uh, come on uh, come on so receiver less confusion okay because once i'm inside this function I'm referring to P, which would be the name of this person, but I also have a package name, and hence why I just didn't um, correct that. And so here I have P, and what else am I, I have going on here? Why it did not put in the um, package? So package P, am I using P in some weird way here? That um, why it's not pulling in? Yep, here we go. And so um, yes, I have this P here. So I probably should. Um, not use this here also so um, I'm gonna do that and let's see if I can select all of those those guys this guy that guy this guy mm, this one this one and then I'm gonna call it uh, let's call it T since we are into small names one little name okay so yep this imported um, errors so I know this is all good no all my errors here are gone let's go to read and so I have P there and P here and so I'm gonna start to do the same thing and just call it T um, and so I'm select this and select this so like that So like that. This is being taken. Yeah. And all right, I have to go back and do it one by one because for some reason my mouse or keyboard somehow um, lost my selection now. So okay. So that looks like that should work and it seems happy. Alright. So here we go. If we go back to main here, um it pulled in that type and let's run it there is some other problems here and so this is an implicit assignment of unexported field name name age and so on and that's because I'm trying to assign to those fields but if we go back here and look those fields are not exported so I'm going to highlight it and try to rename it and I said try to rename it and we'll call it name and this is going to fail right and the reason why it's failed is because there's some error in my program. In order to rename, it doesn't need any, you to have any. It wants your code to compile. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to comment out this, because the error is actually here with those names that I'm trying to access. I don't know why it doesn't show the red squiggly line. And I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to say rename. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is because I wanted to go rename it in all the other files, which is the read, string, and right so notice how it renamed it here also and so if I do rename symbol here it's gonna go and rename it in all the other places also so I don't have to worry about go having it renamed because there it is and if I rename um, social security where is social security um, da, da, da. I can't find it anyway it gotta be here somewhere uh, here, here we go if I rename it here Again, it's going to be social security number. It's going to be, and the reason why we want that public is because we're trying to set those here, right? To use those fields outside of that package. We're in the main package. Those start to sign in the p package, and there's one other one I want to rename. We don't need to use this outside of this package, so this should definitely have a low k 
case name like this so that it's not accessed from outside the package. Now I can go back to main and uncomment this. And then I should be able at this point to run my code now. Okay, so I still have a problem. So it says Bob that read is and is in the on, uh, read declared yada yada. Um, so that is just telling me that these guys are read declared. Okay, so let's go run it now and undefined Bob and Bob that read. Here we go. And where is Bob? Ah, I raised my B at some point. Then no realize that happened and so now we're working okay so this is working and the reason why we're not printing out anything here so now I have this buffer and I'm reading use um, these data um, persons into that buffer and if there's an error then I print it and so on but so far let's assume we're not really looking at the error and I'm ad adjusting my offset to know where into this buffer I can read next so one of the things I might want to do is if you look, we have this mem store. Why don't we store the bytes that represent the encoding of these three individuals into our mem store? And so we can do that by, yep, we have a source. We don't need a destination. We're not doing copying of mem store. Um, we already have data in buff, so we don't need that. So we're going to do buff. Remember, our stuff is being written in buff. And we're going to print out the mem store. Yeah, we don't need to do a copy of this. And we don't need to do a copy of, um, we don't need to print out this either destination. OK, so we should be able to write stuff into our mem store and then see it. And so here we go. And we run this. And it looks, yeah, like we have our different three users. And they were written to buff. And buff was written here. But buff it was 110 bytes. And so that's what we're seeing. All of it, 110 bytes are written here, more with the zeros included. So we already have the offset where the last place in buff we wrote. So really, all we really need to do is say from offset zero from zero to this offset, and that's all we need to write into our memory store. And there we go. So again, our memory store is acting like a file. So we can imagine that what we have just done is encoded this data and write it to our file. But if our data type person implements the read and write um, IO read and IO write our interface. We should be able to just say copy that into our mem store, right? We should we don't we should we shouldn't need a buffer to write stuff into memory. We should be able to just say I have a mem store. I'm gonna open it with 200 bytes max, and then I should be able to just say mem. Um, IO that copy and copy into our mem store is the destination and then so let's just call this mem store let's just call it M and then copy into mem store and I don't have to call write explicitly I can just say and remember, we need ampersand for M because we need a pointer to the mem store because we're going to be making changes. And I'm going to be reading from Bob, right? And since I'm reading from Bob, I don't need a pointer, right? Because I'm not making changes to Bob. And so I should be able to print out our mem store and certainly print out if there are any errors, OK? And so these are not defined, so I need to define them. So this should work because copy says I need a writer, something that implements IO writer interface and IO reader interface, right? So there we go. Let's run this. And now what we see happening is we copied one person and it's just copying it multiple times into our writer, literally filling up our, our, our mem store. If this was a file on a file system and we try to do this, it would just create a, a file that's so big that it would just use up all our disk space if we didn't stop it. So there's certainly a problem, and the problem is is to when you read the def definition of copy, it says copy reads copies from source to destination until either end of file is reached on source or an error occur. So it's going to keep trying to read from Bob until Bob tells us, well, I don't have any more data. But if you look at our implementation of read, we have no concept of 
and error when reading from from Bob um, because we assume that if you give us a buffer buffer where we can copy things into we'll just copy data into it and the only time you we're gonna spit out an error is if you didn't give us a big enough buffer but um, with IO copy it's passing in a big enough buffer but each time it keeps calling Bob it's getting the same thing and so there's no um, concept of it now can we modify our person read method here so that uh, it returns an error if after it's finished reading yeah we could we could simply just return after this return all these are all the bytes and you know end of file but let's ask ourselves this how do we really see person being used do we see person as really and truly a file type object where you can um, read and then if we read and get to the end and the next person try to read that means that uh, what we always return end of file so they always have to return a big enough buffer and maybe that's acceptable or what if somebody gives us a small buffer and then they intend to come and read the second time just read sort of a few bytes at a time until they get to the end we'll have to implement um, like close and reset for a person and it seemed like that's overkill it seemed like a person shouldn't have some the concept of open and close it really should just have the idea of if I have a person and I want to turn them into a, some bytes, I should really just be calling like encode this person as some byte or decode some bytes into a person. So it doesn't seem like read, in my opinion, is the right thing, even though we started off doing that. Okay, it's to demonstrate the potential of a problem and that you don't always need that. And so we can make this work. Like I said, we can do IO that return IO that error and the file, right? Um, what is it? End the file EOF. Yeah, I got an EOF, right? We could return that. And this would work in this particular instance. It's just that I, I still think it's there's a shortcoming um, in, in how this is implemented and it's it's kind of not the right thing for for this for person. So I'm gonna put this back because I don't think just making it return end the file is the right thing. It's kind of misleading. Um, you'd expect something to operate like a file. You don't have, always have to pass it all a big enough buffer to get all the data. You should be able to pass it as a small buffer, call it repeatedly, and then get to the end of it. Okay. Um, and then there's still another problem. If you imagine that you, let's say you had, um, let's take this out, and you had Mary as an, you had var. P, um, not P, um, Jane as a person, at P that person, and let's get rid of memstore. And now we're saying we're gonna copy from Bob to Jane. Now we still need Jane as a pointer because we're gonna make changes to Jane, so we need to, to pass a pointer. And now, after we do that, we're gonna be able to print out what Jane is, and we should see that our Jane is um, we get copy from Bob and what's happening is our program is actually running and growing the buffer inside of Jane and just repeatedly calling it because there's no idea of end the file from Bob and again it's just keep reading 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 so this is not a correct implementation either so we sort of want to be able to um, think of how these objects might be used in a production program and ask ourselves if um, the, the type that we want to implement IO read and write for actually makes sense to op be operating as a file type and you can't see my air quotes. So um, that's a problem. The funny thing is that our writer actually works fine when we had M, um, the mem store here, for example, and we copied Bob into it multiple times, and even though there are multiple copies of Bob in there, we can actually say that you know what? Let's after we copy Bob into the mem store, we can actually say n error uh, error equals to equals command equals to io dot copy, and we can say ampersand Jane and from m. Right, and since we're going to modify M, we have to pass a pointer to M because remember, every time we read from M, we update the offset. And so, um, oh, what am I doing here? N, 
come on, my keyboard or my fingers, whatever. Something is not working today. And so now we're going to see that if we print out Jane, we're going to have a valid Jane because Jane is just going to read as much data as it needs to do in code a person. And it doesn't need any more. And so you could see that's why we have short write because Jane is like, hey, that's enough data. It's more, you know. And so I'm reading less data than you're asking me to. So we can imagine that IO copy tried to pass the Jane to um, our person object representing Jane a lot more data than 24 bytes. And Jane is saying, I'm doing a short write because I only accepted um, fewer bytes than you actually give me, right? And so, so, so the write here works if we copy in from our um, mem store, but it doesn't work um, if we try to copy between things. And if we have a IO read and IO writer object, then they should be able to work flawlessly with IO copy. And as we can see, person objects do not work well when you combine them with other properly implemented IO, um, you know, IO reader and writer objects, and they don't even work well among themselves in terms of use, like when you use IO read and IO copy. IO copy. So that's the lesson for this section. It's not every type you need to implement IO reader and IO writer, and Sometimes all you need is a encode and decode function. Um, and we'll see that much later on. Um, I'll cut the video here. I think I probably demonstrated the problem that you could run into. So hopefully this is not too repetitive, but again, hopefully repetition helps you remember it and the idea to sink in. Take care, see you in the next video. Hit this thumbs up button for me, please. And do spread the word and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, take care, bye.